The basic rule of politics is that if you're not fighting bankers and financiers, you're spinning your wheels. You're being used by somebody. You're being duped. You may be cutting your own throat. So just remember, Wall Street is the enemy. Wall Street has always been the enemy. Breaking the power of Wall Street, cutting them down to size, reducing this dictatorial hold of Wall Street over the federal government, that's the project. Government in itself is a battlefield. It's where the population confronts or should confront inordinate Wall Street power. The substance of politics is a fight against finance capital. For Republicans, uh, there's something that you can do too. The Republican Party had positive features when it considered itself the party of heavy industry. Modern industrial production found its expression in the Republican Party. If we had a Republican Party today that came on the scene as the party of heavy industry, we would be much better off. Instead, the Republican Party, and this is one of the reasons why it's so grotesquely distorted, the Republican Party comes on the scene as a party of sweatshops, of low-wage, union-busting employers, largely concentrated in the southern states, uh, with the main idea of uh, driving down wages, driving down benefits. Cheap labor means low profits. The success of the United States was as a high-wage economy. You try to turn the U.S. into a low-wage economy, that's a recipe for ruin. We need to have a high-wage economy, and the Republican Party should learn from even somebody like Henry Ford, who knew that if you don't pay the automobile workers a living wage, they can't buy your products. It's just that simple. So instead of being the party of low-wage sweatshops uh, across the country, the Republican Party ought to reform themselves and fight for what we have to call industrial capital. Industrial capitalism works. That's what the U.S. has functioned on, and that's what has gotten us successes. Finance capital does not work. And what we have today is a situation where the finance capitalists run the government, they dictate the policies, and finance capital is in the process of crushing industrial capital, see the demise of the auto industry, and also crushing commercial capital. What we have today in the United States, even before a crisis of economy and finance, is a crisis of the entire ruling class. We have a ruling elite of bankers, politicians, and other masters of human destiny who are insane and incompetent. It's the kind of ruling class that destroys countries and civilizations. Look at a guy like Larry Summers. He believes that derivatives represent value. We've now got $1.5 quadrillion worth of derivatives crushing the world economy. Back in the 1990s, there was a battle inside the Clinton administration between Brooks Lee Bourne of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission on the one hand, who wanted to not even regulate derivatives. She just wanted to make derivatives reportable to know how many derivatives there were, over-the-counter derivatives, futures, options, indices, but above all, the over-the-counter derivatives, which are the structured investment vehicles, the credit default swaps, the collateralized debt obligations, mortgage-backed securities, and so forth. She simply said, let's make them reportable. And a howl went up. No, that's communism, said Greenspan, said Phil Graham of Texas, said Wendy Graham, his charming wife, said Bob Rubin from Citibank, who was the Secretary of the Treasury for Clinton, and Larry Summers, who was also in the Clinton Treasury. So Summers believes in derivatives. He's part of the gang that brought you derivatives. Deregulated derivatives have destroyed the world economy more than any other single financial factor. When he became president of Harvard, Larry Summers said, let's put the whole Harvard endowment into derivatives. I think at that point they had 40 or $45 billion, and he actually believed it. He believed that this was an investment. So the result is, of course, that after the crash, the Harvard endowment has lost one-third of its value on derivatives. So Larry Summers, in his incompetence, in his ideological fanaticism, in his blindness 
and indeed his cruelty, is a symbol of the uh, incompetence and the, the impossibility of continuing with the ruling class that we have today. This ruling class has got to go. In other words, these individuals have got to be replaced by people who are not from inside their system and who don't share their axioms and premises about what's going on. If we look at just the U.S. and the British, between the city of London, Wall Street, and Washington, you're looking at a collection of specimens of a ruling class who are doomed in the sense that any civilization dominated by people of this sort with this kind of thinking will collapse within a very uh, minimal length of time, historically speaking.